I didn't know you had all those items there. <laughs> You're like holding out on me, man. No. <laughs> like... no, because... Hey everyone, Theo here. Recently I had the opportunity to take a vacation to Japan. And if you guys don't already know this, Japan is sort of like one of the hubs for personal audio. And it is also a hub for a lot of reviewers in audio. And I happened to meet up with Timmy in Osaka. If you guys don't know who Timmy is, he runs the channel Giz Audio. Great dude, does a lot of cool stuff. Um, highly recommend checking out his channel. I think the first day when I arrived, it was raining a lot. Um, so yeah, we went out to dinner. Then on the second day, we went and hiked up Fushimari, Fushimi Inari, I think is the name of the, the attraction. So that was in Kyoto. I think that was probably one of the most intense days of the trip. It was like, I think almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit when we were hiking up. So Timmy, after walking up, how do you feel? Oh God, enlightened. Yeah. <laughs> where's I've, the where's the view though? That's I've what I'm been, wondering about. I've been reborn. <laughs> so yeah, we basically hiked up another half hour and the view at the summit was kind of non-existent. It basically looked like all the other checkpoints. But other than that, it was a lot of fun. After that, we went to see a temple. I forget the name of the temple, but that was super crowded. Lots of tourists. Um, the thing with the, the Fushimi Inari is that a lot of people sort of give up halfway through or like a quarter of the way through. So the crowd sort of tends to thin out near the end. And one, you can snap some great photos, but two, it's just nice that you can sort of appreciate the attraction for what it is and sort of like the, you know, the culture behind it. And that just wasn't really the case at the second temple we went to. It was completely overrun with tourists. Um, and that, that sort of describes Japan in general right now at this time of the year. But yeah, still had a lot of fun, got some more great pictures. And then after that, I think we went to an all you can eat barbecue for like eight bucks. I was joking with Timmy about this, but there's no way I could be a regular customer there because I would probably be losing the money every single time. Like, yeah, I ate enough, I think, to more than get my money's worth. And that's not something that you can really do in a lot of American buffets. But yeah, it was a lot of fun hanging out with Timmy. Super fun guy, super, I don't know, just, just I couldn't have asked for a better host, honestly. And he also let me see his collection, which you guys are going to see right now. Just in the background. They don't know, there's no name on it or there's anything. No just like a little Easter egg while we do the tour. Hello, it's a big mess, so uh, <laughs> I hope you guys are okay with that. So uh, inside here is office that I shared with my wife. We're just gonna show my section though, which is just, there we go, everything here. As you can see all the headphones. I'm starting to get into headphones as well. So I'm like an amateur when it comes to headphones because I haven't tried way too many. Mm -hmm. But I have the original 600, the 6XX, the 560 s the Hi-Fi Men, whatever this is, I forgot the name. This is the XS and that's the, um, the Aria Stealth. Okay. Is that an 800S? 800S, yeah. Oh, This one okay. I actually use a lot, all the okay. time. Yeah. So would you say that's like your reference headphone then, kind of? Yeah, yeah. I like, I, it really gives you that wide stage feeling. It's... Mm -hmm. It's just fun to use. Yeah. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. And I know that's, I think that's Crin's quote unquote reference headphone as well. Mm -hmm. So that makes a lot of sense. Down here is where you see the, um, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is where I was just a moment ago. The, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, okay. I was going to pour it, but I don't want to. If you had to take up. an estimate, how many items do you think are in that basket right now? In this basket alone, yes. probably over a hundred, like a hundred twenty. Because at last I count, last I count was like months ago. I own about nearly 200 IEMs, probably right now over 200, over 200. So okay. probably 100 just in that basket alone, yeah. Okay, and so just for context, my own collection, I think, sits at a little over 50 IEMs, so yeah. I mostly thought that he had Chai Fi IEMs, but I have to say that I've been kind of blown away by the extent of his collection, and Timmy, do you want to talk a little bit more about that maybe? So, yeah, um, for me, my philosophy is I just like to be well informed. Like if something is super hyped up in, in the market, whether it's in the end game sphere or the budget sphere, like I want to get my ears on it. And if possible, I want to own it so I can just compare, you know, on my own time. Because of course, trying at demos, shows and stuff like that is really not like ideal. So yeah, I want to be the, the most informed as I can so that I can deliver the good information to you guys when I say something is best, when I say something is worst, you know. It has a lot more weight and context that way. My most proud one is probably the Annihilator. Okay. It annihilated both my ears and my wallet. The C1R, of course, the uh, the oldie goodie. 
the Diva here. This is the Mess 2. That's the Supernova. This one I actually don't own as a loan, but I'll never give it back. This one is the Mess 3. The original Mess, which is still the best Mess. Right. These two are not right. I was actually good. listening to the three of them earlier because I haven't heard the Mess in like a year or so. And I have to agree that I think. The Mest and the Mest Mark II are the, still the best out of the uh, Mest collection. I don't think I prefer the, the newest one over it, or the Indigo for that matter, which I heard a while back. I haven't heard the Indigo actually, yeah. So, oh god, yeah, this is super proud. This is the Prisma Azul. This is rare. If you have this, never sell it. They don't make this anymore. It's uh, Australian made, you know, shout out to Josh. Um, what else do I have that's cool? I have the Viento. B, this is the Universal. I want to get a custom of this because I thought the same thing. <laughs> Precog thought that it's just bright, but it's really good. I just want it smoother in the uh, CIM form. What else do I have? I have so many. I have a lot of soft ear stuff. This is the RSV, the Twilight, the... Bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have way and too then, many. Sure. You have, a, you have a 12T too, right? That, that was what took me by surprise. Like, I did not think you had one. I did not know about that at all. Oh, uh, yeah. I have the U12T here. I have the, of course, the Anoli VXs here, too. You have a, v you have a VX? I have a VX, yeah. Okay, I see. The Gaia here. It just keeps going. It's on loan. And this little box here. Oh. I have the Monarch 2, which I think is better than Monarch 3. I don't really care much. Wait, you have Monarch 3. Mark 3? No, I don't have the three. I tried it at the um, the show. Oh, okay. I, I like it, I but not as that. much. I have the Andromeda. You have a 2020 Andro. Not not 2020. This is like Andromeda S. I not I have no clue, but there's so many Andromedas. Yeah. I bought this recently, so it's whatever the most recent one is. Not the Emerald Sea. The Emerald Sea is not good. This is the Gemini. A QDC, QDC Gemini. Gemini. Yeah. Dude. It's like the tamer, more appealing um, version of the VX. It's not as like not as aggressively bright but yeah those are most of the um i guess what you guys would call end game uh, or end game iams i don't know you had all those items there <laughs> you're like holding out on me man <laughs> like, no because like i was looking at your uh i was looking at your graph i was like okay which one has each tried mm -hmm. already which one has oh each tried? So yeah i mean I, i've definitely heard them but i didn't know you owned them too no i haven't <laughs> all right well thank you so much to me for sharing with us your wonderful collection and giving us a studio tour don't rob me. <laughs> <laughs> and what you're gonna see now is footage from the third day where he gave me a tour of sort of the more residential area of Osaka. Um, I think it's very easy to get caught up in going to like the, I don't know, the tourist hubs and stuff like that and like the, the very urban areas, which sort of don't always reflect the, I don't know, the life of the everyday person in a, uh, in a country. I just heard some crazy thunder. That was super loud. I hope it doesn't rain like it did yesterday. The rain yesterday was insane. But yeah, it was really cool to get a little bike tour of the area. We got some sushi. It rained super duper hard. I almost thought I wasn't gonna be able to make it home because the trains were starting to get shut down. Oh my God, that was so loud. I ended up looking out though and being able to take the train and I also got really lucky and I ended up walking away with probably one of the one of the best shots I took during that whole trip. Um, I happened to just take a photo at just the right moment when lightning was striking right above um, the building and I think a few hundred meters away. So crazy shot. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and I am definitely looking forward to bringing you guys more content like this in the future. Precog out.